Hey guys, welcome to the second game of the Cotter Cup match between Harvard and Princeton, part of the semifinals or quarterfinals. I never had that that kind of system worked out in my mind. I believe this is quarterfinals is how it works. Then semi is the round of four, I think. When you have anyway, doesn't matter. We have at the six o'clock position Jing for Harvard as the green Protoss. We have Daisy as the uh, blue Protoss starting at the 10 o'clock position. And this is going to be on Neo Medusa. Medusa is a really fun match, Protoss versus Protoss, I think. You've got the middle, which is somewhat buildable now. That's pretty much the only difference between that and the old Medusa. Uh, but you got that natural secondary, which a uh, big gap there on that uh, expansion. You've got the temple, which I think that's 12 stack temples that you can take down with splash damage more effectively than you can with individual fire. Um, you can sneak sometimes some probes up here to do some cheese. Kind of the mineral same thing as destination. Uh, big open area over that back. Mineral only expansion right there as well. So pretty harassable. The thing for Protoss though is, is the Dragoons getting up on that secondary and the distance on this map. You can really deny information into the mid game. Which makes for a really creative play I think. I think Dark Templars can be successful. The Weaver Drops can be successful. Uh... I, I've seen a lot of success for people with 3-gate Dragoon. I've seen a lot of people actually go up to 4-gate Zealot uh, really early and just run with that. There's just a lot of things you can do on this map, although I feel like that's one of the less effective uh, builds just because Zealot's slow running across the map and just at overwhelming. You really have to catch your opponent off guard to really pull that one off and hope he went for an expansion early. Looks like just a single gateway, no proxy tech at this stage. And the gateway being, uh, being built really close on the interior, so playing a little bit safe. Wants to make sure that the reinforcements come uh, very close to the main. And it looks like they're almost in... Um, this is pseudo anti manor pylon. Because, uh, yeah, well, first of all, you can have those troops kind of in position to help defend against a probe attack. <laughs> the probe attack. Look out. Looks like uh, both players are going to scout each other right off the bat. But yeah, you can see if the Zealot or the Dragoon pops out right here. And it looks like uh might be seeing a two-gate build. Second pylon down already here, the 6 o'clock position for Jing. Uh, let's see what's going on. And it looks like we're just going to see standard Dragoons on the opposite end. Uh, I think Zealots can be effective on this map just because it is open ramp, but the distance is, you can get a lot of, of Dragoons out before that time. And interesting, I'm kind of curious about the decision for that second pylon before the assimilator. That's going to put him somewhat behind on gas. It's not going to hurt him too terribly into the mid game. Looks like he is producing, both players producing a zealot, but that will uh, give him a slight su uh, supply advantage um, past this. But that's going to be, he'll be down on Dragoons and gas um, into the mid game just by about 75 to 50. Cybernetic score not going on the corner. Really interesting defensive arrangement. Looks like Daisy's going to wander in. Let's see if Daisy goes for that manor pylon. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to. It looks like just kind of sneaking through. And a zealot running up, able to get a single hit on that probe scout on its way around. Cybernetic score on the edge, and this will help speed up gas mining as well. So as you can see, he's already at 176 uh, versus so about 150 gas difference. Uh, right there, which can be, you know, that's a couple of Dragoons. Pretty significant. Uh, a second zealot being produced. And it looks like a second uh, zealot being produced on the opposite end as well, rather than a gateway or any additional tech, um, any additional dragoons, things like that. So uh, both both players playing a little bit unorthodox from what I'm used to on this map. I'm used to seeing just the single zealot production, um, and it looks like there's that dragoon, single zealot, and then just dragoons after that. And even if you do produce that single zealot, it's just to be aggressive on that front door. It looks like Daisy doing a good job of keeping that probe scout alive. Um, no range upgrade on it looks like for Jing it looks like we're not also not seeing range here um, huh also not seeing range so probably going to see a push to tech we'll see what, what type of push to tech we're seeing on the opposite end looks like that zealot was able to kill the probe scout and losing your scout pvp is absolutely huge it's a big advantage for daisy it looks like actually i take it back Jing is upgrading his range now finally going to be able to take out that probe scout but i really he's gleaned the information he wanted to stuck at one base um he also saw that range upgrade so he knows that he's not going oh and he's going to get bonus able to slip back i'm going to make sure that the secondary wasn't taken somehow he really didn't with all that stuff on the ground he really didn't have the minerals and going for some proxy city of Dune to Dark Templar Tech uh, behind his base. So Daisy going to go for the 2-gate DT. We should be able to approach on the ground. And really, it's going to be up to... Oh, and a second gate going down on the front door. Let's see if he goes up to 3 gates. Decides to go for that 3-gate Dragoon. Um, really, what he's going to need to do is put down a robotics facility after this. It is um, pretty standard to go 2-gate. Oh, no! He's going to go 3-gate Dragoon. And this is the perfect counter. Daisy, and very nice job anticipating this. 3-gate um, Dragoon has nothing on the... the the DT build, and really you end up with your observers out in the field so much later than you would want them. As a result, those DTs are definitely going to be able to get into the main of uh, of 
of Jing's base, and they're going to be able to wreak havoc there. And that's just kind of the advantage of hand scouting. It looks like he's now going to have that robotics facility, but uh, it's going to be kind of a double-edged sword here, because with the robotics facility alongside the three gate before, he's going to be short on Dragoons, first of all, or he's just not going to have enough troops to stop. Um, well, basically, that's what it comes down to. He's just either not going to have enough troops to stop it, or he's not going to have an observer out to deal uh, with the the Dark Templar that are running into his base, and it looks like a Nexus put along uh, put along the exterior. So that at least is a, a slight advantage. Instead of producing troops, troop production was cut to favor the Dark Templar um, with just uh, with just no dragoons to support and try to go for an economic edge. After that, if there were more dragoons on the ground instead of this Nexus, it could have been absolutely devastating. Two more Dark Templar being uh, created. Now starting wandering out in the field, doesn't look like the two Zealots and the Dragoon are going to come up to support. And actually, somehow Jing has this the troop superior troop count, even though that gateway um, shouldn't have really played effect yet. Now three Dragoons being produced. There's that observatory. The Dark Templar are still going to be able to wander in, though. Let's see. It looks like. Let's see if he sees the waiver. It looks like he's starting to push up with three Dragoons and these two Zealots uh, now getting a little bit antsy. Um, just to, oh, no, now backing off, so he's going to be able to at least hide that, And but uh, I think he saw the waivers, it looks like he's backing up to the main with those two Dragoons, could be that he was worried a little bit about um, a, a Reaver, but it's going to be a little bit of time before that Observer's out, and in the meantime, uh, these Dark Temple are going to have an absolute field day, as you can see, just w just working. Now what's up for Daisy is Daisy's going to have to deal with an all-in counterattack, I would assume, because that's really the natural response for a Protoss player is, is oh frick, I, I'm bleeding probes, I know I'm going to end up behind now, let me go for an all-in. The probe's still just getting killed, wow, that's going to be uh, really going to the bonus here. <laughs> 13 kills, 14 kills already, and this this is going to put him severely economically ahead, but look at that, only two Dark Templar, a single Dragoon, and two Zealots to defend on that front door, a couple more Zealots alongside, and here comes that counterattack. If he can get uh, that Observer, it looks like he does have that Observer along the field, if he can just gather up his troops, um, he's had a pretty good uh, shot at attacking on that front, and fortunately, spreading his troops out, sending in the two Dragoons piecemeal, as well as the uh, Zealots alongside, ends up losing a Dragoon to uh, those Dark Templar. If he can gather up his troops and go in for another shot uh, with all of his Dragoons and that Observer alongside rather than just kind of individual troops. He'll still have a pretty good shot at breaking that down, but that's giving unfortunately that's giving Daisy more time to build up his troop count. Looks like he's getting another gateway down. And he's going to have some speed zealots to support, and I think that's going to be it. So that was clever, actually, upgrading speed um, to kind of counter basically the large amount of dragoons that would be coming in after this, because speed zealots um, are really good against uh, dragoons mid game. And two observers instead of just one, he really just wanted to keep that one observer up uh, instead of the two. Another dark temple are going to run home, but they've got that scouting information. And here comes the all in. More dragoons being produced, and I assume they're just going to go to the front door. But against six speed zealots, uh, he he might have some trouble. Actually, no, the all-in uh, stopping short. Jing uh, is continuing to hold his front door, even though he's severely economically behind. I think this is going to cost him the one opportunity he had. Um, now he's starting to move out, but held up a little short. And every second counts, really, because that's two more Dragoons that are now going to be on the front and in position. A fourth gateway going down. So this is going to be it, and it's going to have to be uh, up to Micro, this, these two front Dragoons uh, out in kind of a precarious position. A Dark Templar uh, far ahead of those Observers, and that's again going to create more delay space, so nice on Daisy's part. Dark Templar now getting taken out, but he has a really good look at the uh, the troop counts, and honestly, between these six speed zelts and these three Dragoons, he should have a pretty good shot at defending this. Probe's off, also coming off the line. If Daisy defends this at all, he's going to end up winning here. Um, the speed zealots off the line, probes being drawn out pretty far, and uh, yeah, this is, I think, the entirety of the attack grouping that's coming off, and now very well defended by Daisy. That should be GG right there. Just overwhelming troops running down. Those speed zealots able to get right on top of those dragoons. The dragoons just not able to micro effectively enough against them. Um, and yeah, getting surrounded, that's going to be it. That should be GG right there. There's uh, So, game, Princeton going up 2-0 over uh, Harvard. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for listening.